Okay. We are recording. Steve? Yes? No squeaking of the chair. What chair? There we go. That's exactly how we like it. Here we go. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jonathan Starkey, your absolutely fabulous host of Jeshim Matters. And oh, here we go. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I've no, got no, a no, no. With you. you can't Just talk. Hang on. You... I've got a bow's fit you. Yeah. Every week, you cut me off. Every single week. And Apart last, from last week, week. Last week, you even organised to do the podcast on a different day without telling me. <laughs> And the, <laughs> the, the listeners of this show must be appalled at what's going on every week. They... There he is. He's off. Now you're going to shut up. Hey, <laughs> wasn't he done it last week? He got thrown off because he did it secretly on a different day. Oh, here Absolutely we go. Absolutely appalling. <laughs> mo, 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 mo. The music's going to be gone. Man. Trevor, say hello, did it? <laughs> Trevor, say hello. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the show. This is the Gazelle, and that man, a.k.a. the Statsman, Mark Hartley. Say hello, sir. Hello, sir. Didn't know all the listeners uh, send messages in saying how good it was last week. Oh, yeah, there was uh. just absolutely tons of them. <laughs> tons I've of them. Four emails. Even Hamas said we haven't got him. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want him. <laughs> Give him back. <laughs> Oh, well, there you go. Oh, yeah. That was your excuse, was it, Raven? Well, excuse me. I need to point something out here because I've had loads of emails. I've been stopped in the street everywhere. I've had people saying to me, where were you last week? And I've explained the situation to them, and they're appalled. In fact, the letters of complaints will be flooding in. <laughs> right, because you're center. on this week. <laughs> There's our explanation. <laughs> hey. Yeah, where's, where's our, our explanation? explanation? What's the explanation? How come everybody was, else found out about it, but not you? I I was sat here on a Monday night doing notes for the, the Tuesday night podcast because <laughs> we do on a Tuesday night, and all of a sudden I get a phone call late on Monday night saying, uh, we've done it. Yep. And well, uh, you know, I was thinking, what's well. going on here? Time so, and tide waits for no raven. <laughs> I'm going to tell the listeners exactly what's going on here. It's a plot. It yeah, is a plot. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and I've just been watching. I don't know whether anybody's seen it. The how the fall of the House of Usher. That's right. And right, have you seen it? And right at the end of it, it's got its own demonic raven. Yep, that's it. Oh yeah, we've had one for two years. Dim one. <laughs> dim, dim oh, did you say dim raven. or demonic? <laughs> dim, dim raven. Demonic. <laughs> Demonic, yes, demonic. demonic raven. You want to watch yourselves, yeah? yeah. Okay. But, but yeah. Uh, well, in case a, you cast a, a spell over us, oh, well, I'll put an occultist spell all over you, a lot of you, yeah. Well, right. you watch, check what's on your front doors when you go in tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what, a chicken's head with blood dripping down, and a candle uh, dead, underneath dead it, dead rabbit pins to your letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> We get it regular. What, happened, often, to the, what new, happened to the horse's head in the bed? That's what I want to know. Oh, that's there already. Yeah, don't worry about that. Okay, right. All right, all right, all right. Let's go on to the roundup. Let's move it on. Okay, first one up. Council slams unlawful plans to house migrants at ex Dambusters base. How about that? Oh, another one of these stories. Council bosses, they say that the government plans to house the migrants at former Dan Buster's RAF base are unlawful and should be quashed. And this is West Lindsay District Council, and it lays out opposition to RAF Scampton migrant plan. And they Where said, are we going to put them then? Oh, sorry, say again. Where are we going to put them? <laughs> On a boat, back to where they came from. That's it. And it send, a, and send a lot more Love with them. Pop. Mm. Is, is this not an actual besmirching of the people who fought for this country? Correct. Yes. Correct. Yeah, yeah. remember they I went over that, that. They went over that channel, didn't they? And in a lot worse conditions. Yeah, it was going to be a lot worse on the other side. Correct. Mm. All for what this? And yeah, some of them back. didn't make it. Mm. True. A lot didn't. Indeed. The fatality rates were very high. And what about this one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Debanking has been added to the dictionary after Nigel Farage and Kutzrau. <laughs> debanking the word, debanking, and debanked. Typical Naraj, Naraj Farage, isn't it? I was going to say Nigel Farage. Typical Nigel Farage, in it? Yep. Girls in mayhem. Oh, indeed. And what about 
the number of public electric car charges is plunging across England. I wonder why that is. Anybody got any idea about that? The oh, number yeah, of what? Sorry. You said about two years ago, it's an absolute 10-year fad. Oh, I did. Uh, uh, hydrogen did. is where we're going. Oh, yeah. A lot of water. Are you holding a lot of water, are you, Steve? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you, after threatening us, you better have a bladder the size of a football next time we see you, because as soon as you go to the toilets, we're all diving in to get you. All right. <laughs> I don't think so. I've, I've, been a, I've been away with you. I tell you now, put three locks on the door. I tell you. <laughs> I'm not going in that toilet with him. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all right. He goes in them, uh, what they call... Them special ones yeah, the and the neutral. Ones. Yeah, the gender <laughs> neutral. <laughs> look at his face. Or the disabled. Yeah. yeah I look at his he face. said, you can't come in here. You're not a woman with a beard. <laughs> I I, I've actually seen a woman with a beard a few weeks ago. Uh, come on, Miss Budweiser 2022. Come on, tell the truth. Sure. Sure. Okay. British Soap Awards are cancelled after Philip Schofield stepped down. The British Soap Awards have been cancelled. Yep. After Oh, I'm sorry, I just need to inform the listeners my life will now <laughs> no longer be the same. You can't, mm. It's not going to be worth living, is it? Although uh, although the gazelle does like Emmerdale. Uh, I was just going to say, excuse me. <laughs> you speak for yourself. And why well, have they cancelled it for that flaming? Whatever it is. Well, ITV have cancelled the ceremony, which celebrates the best of British soaps, and it will not take place in 2024. Hey, good. Let's have some proper <laughs> educational stuff on the television, not this kind of rubbish nonsense. Hey, well, I'll tell you what, that's my campaign started for next year. <laughs> Bring back the British Soap Awards. Of course we should. I want to know who wins, Emma Dale or Cody. How I mean, about people okay. who should have a campaign to bring back soap for them? To be honest, propaganda <laughs> awards. Yeah, dirty, dirty, dirty programs. Anyway, what what are we talking about? Are you going to be rambling on? All no, 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 no. Be... Shut up, you. Shut up. <laughs> diversity trainer says stop wasting money on diversity training. <laughs> Of course he does. <laughs> he said, a diversity trainer for banks hits out at British companies for wasting money on diversity training. Mr. Musaku <laughs> sounds more Japanese than black, is he, doesn't he? Is he handing all his wages back then? Oh, no, 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 no. He him. won't be doing no, anything like that. So, no. no, he won't be doing anything like that. No. But, I, I mean, he's, what he's saying is they're wasting millions on diversity training, according to, you know, he founded this inclusionary consultancy. His name is Buki Misaku, founder of Diverse City Think Tank, claimed that many companies were sinking money into well-intentioned but fundamentally flawed strategies around equality, diversity and inclusion. Well, he's just excluded himself, hasn't he? <laughs> he you know, put himself down the dole office in the morning, hasn't he? That's right, that's See right, ya. that's right. <laughs> Clever fella. Oh, well, there you go. Humza Yusuf confirms his wife's parents have escaped Gaza. There you go. Who says position doesn't have its privileges? I thought they were all trapped. Well, here you go. This is one that was sent in by the cutter. Free bus travel pledge for asylum seekers in Scotland. Did you hear that? Is public transport that bad, is it? Well. (laughs) So is this for anybody of any age to get these? The first, no, no, this is just for no. asylum seekers in Scotland. Yes, so the just first, one second, for asylum seekers of any age. Well, I don't think they've restricted the age at all. So, Humza well, why Yusuf, do I have to wait till I'm uh, of a certain age to get my free bu- bus pass? Because you're not an asylum seeker. I mean, we just need an asylum to put you in. <laughs> 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 Go ahead, Trevor. Yes, me being of the uh, the senior of our group. Yes, indeed, I, the father of the house. Yes. I, the father of the house. I applied for a bus pass when I was 60 and told you can forget that because we've moved it now. You've got to get it when you get, you, you well, you apply for it when you get your pension age, which is now 66. And I'm travelling along uh, Manchester Road to get onto the motorways where I pass the... Uh, the two hotels where all the migrants are in Warrington, well, I should say a big chunk of the migrants are in Warrington, and they're all sat in the bus stops. They're waiting for the buses. 
Either that, or they're doing it more so now because the weather's turned. But they all had they had all had brand new mountain bikes for the summer, and now they're all in the bus stops. So I have heard, I've heard. I don't, I don't, don't do that. Yes, but I am actually choking because I'm just about sick to death of this country. Yep, sick to death of it. Right. This, you, you've you now become a second-class citizen in your own... life. You've now become a second-class citizen in your own country. Exactly. They're flying around on buses. They're going to Manchester, back into Warrington, or wherever else they're going, with bus passes. I know. And I've worked 46-plus years, pay my taxes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I can't You sound like the king of Siam, et cetera. Etc. Bus pass. Go ahead, Mark. Oh, don't uh, don't be too downhearted. Look on the bright side. There's going to be loads of cheap bikes on eBay. Probably thousands of them. Though. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe we can fill some of these empty cycle lanes. They keep boshing up everywhere. Once mm. we get all our bikes back. Well, okay, we'll and uh, let's end on a happy note. Oh, please do. <laughs> there are calls to get rid of Gary Lineker. Yeah, oh, he's Teflon. No, he's Teflon. Well, I don't think so. I think people are getting fed up of him. Who's going to go first, him or the paedophile statue? I think it'll be him first. Yeah, possibly. Anyway, okay, so that's the roundup for this week. Uh, by the way, when we were talking about second-class citizens, citizens, Steve opted to be a third-class citizen <laughs> voluntarily. <laughs> I want to be a well, third-class citizen. I want somebody to moan about. Well, to be quite honest with you, um, the uh, influx of support I'm getting now because uh, justice for Steve oh, it is, it's is taken gathering off. pace. It's taken and off. In fact, I'm hearing stories of people all over the country now who are sick <laughs> and tired <laughs> and bewildered and appalled at the way I'm on the podcast them on a regular basis. And to be quite frank... I thought your ways, name was Steve. You keep on saying that, to be quite frank. It goes frank. over my head to a large degree, but to be honest with you, I think there is an underlying revolution in support of the Raven all over the country. Oh, yes. And what are you going to be doing? You're going to be calling everybody to prayer? A Viking prayer? <laughs> well, yes. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll get all my uh, Viking gear out, ready for when we do our live shows. Indeed, indeed. And it on is a long boat on the day. Well, yes. In fact, I talking of that, talking of the day, um, I'm trying to organise um, my, you know, you make funeral plans in advance. I'm trying to do mine. But... Bring it forward. <laughs> and, <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> we'll, we'll assist you and facilitate this. I've said this before. I'd like uh, a longboat, a uh, Viking longboat. And... Um, I used to be lying on it on a big pile of wood. And oh, no, we're going to have banks. you sat up like El Cid. No, and then, uh, no, you, you, you're lying down proper. And then I'm just drifting down towards the weir, and people are firing flame lit arrows onto the boat, set on fire. Like in the film, The Vikings. That's, oh, I'll that's, start that out. Know, I've got to. I've got to send the application. I think I'll have to write to Louise Gittins, but she doesn't normally uh, respond to emails. I think she'll so. respond to this one. <laughs> she, she would respond to that one. <laughs> We're absolutely certain of that one. So uh, we'll see what happens. I'll let you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's move on. I suppose we had to do this, but and Stats is going to be leading on this, and it is the okay. COVID inquiry. Oh. Mm. Have you seen everything that's going on there? And all the WhatsApp messages that are being like sort of released. Dominic Cummins has been a pearler. Woo, what he's been saying about those people. Anyway, Mark, what's your views on this? It's kind of took a little bit of a backseat to what's going on in Israel, hasn't it? But I thought we we better touch on it. We'll probably end up back on Israel next week. But actually, I'll let Peter Hitchens say it because he did a good article. I think it was in the Daily Mail. Oh, yeah. Yes. So yeah. I'm going to quote I, I like it. Peter Hitchens. Yeah, I'm just going to quote a little bit. He said, yeah, go this ahead. is his words. He said, the COVID inquiry should be treated as severely as the people of this country were treated by the government during the great panic of 2021. All involved should be told to go home and stay there. They should be free to do some daily exercise, but otherwise not permitted to bother us again. Yeah, Excellent. Quite well worded. I'd yeah. actually go a little further and put these people on trial. But he's right. It's the whitewash we expected, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. And mm. I know that they've got KCs doing the questions, but... The biggest thing that came across to me on listening to it was chaos. 
you know, total chaos. Chaos, indecision. I don't think that Boris was the right man to be in charge of this crisis. It's as simple as that. And apparently, he kept on chopping and changing all the time, and it was annoying the hell out of everybody because they couldn't make any kind of a, an action plan when he would one minute come in and say, they're going to do this. And then in the next, he would come in and say, no, a change of mind, we're going to do this. And people didn't know where they were with him, and they were getting so frustrated. And when you listen to some of the WhatsApp messages and the, the evidence that's put forward, you can see, I mean, at the time, the guy had personal problems, you know, divorce, wife, uh, you know, finalized, and I don't know. And I t- it just, it doesn't bode well because the Conservative Party were all going along with it. And, and if you've got any form of a reticence to act on things, then how can you get anything done? I mean, I feel the same way about Rishi Sunak now over these protests going mm. on, in, on on Armistice Day. Isn't it a wonder that anybody could actually protest about that when we've got big things going on? I mean, cost of living crisis. Why can't they come out in the numbers for that? I just, I haven't got a clue. Anyway, lots of the directors, you know, that were in there. I mean, I have to say that, I, I mean, I do like Cummings because he was just so, so straight about everything that he was saying. He said in a text, which he calls ministers, useless F pigs, morons, and see, see you next Tuesday. <laughs> you know, and he understated the position as events showed in 2020. And everything points to a, a complete lack of a plan. And so well, we, we don't have plans anymore in this country. And we, we all have, suffered. Uh, reactions. And we all suffered from that terribly, terribly. I don't actually think now, looking back, Realistically speaking, I don't even think that we had to close off. I don't think we had to close things down. I think a, a lot of people, they're rightfully annoyed uh, because that man in charge completely destroyed businesses and lives of certain people. Yes. And did he care about the older folk? No. No, it didn't seem to be that way. Okay. And uh, <laughs> here's, here's an exchange, a WhatsApp exchange. Dominic Cummins said, and this is to Simon Case, okay? Simon Case of the civil service, top guy. Uh, gotcha, thanks, all makes perfect depressing sense. And then Simon Case says, after this morning, FT driven performances by BJ. I am at the end of my tether. <laughs> What's going on in the background? <laughs> We're just waiting patiently. It's all right. Carry on. We were we just up, actually up, waiting up, for you up. to come back to the same planet as us. You were gone and you were own little world. For well, I'm ages telling everybody what, ha- what happened, right? I'll start again. <coughs> Dominic oh, no. Cummings. Oh, no, oh, no, not again, not again, not Listen, again. Dominic Cummings said, Gotcha. Thanks, <laughs> all makes perfect, depressing sense. And Simon Case said, After this morning's FT driven performance by BJ, I am at the end of my tether. He changes strategic direction every day. Monday, we were all about fear of virus returning as per Europe March. Today, we're in let it rip mode because the UK is pathetic and it needs a cold shower. What the hell is all this about? Go ahead, Gazelle. Absolute shambles, isn't it? Yeah. That's exactly what we said all the way through it. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. All I've written about by this subject tonight is... What is the point of this COVID inquiry? It's an incredible cost. It's a whitewash. And it's supposedly, they reckon it's going to run till 2026. What? 2026, right? Like Brexit, isn't it? (laughs) All they're doing is they're giving money to their friends, the lawyers. As you've said, the KCs are all there. They're all earning Mm, massive books. And all the staff who are there. Have you seen how many staff are there? All taking the little notes behind them. And, of course, the judge. She's come out of retirement. She's come out of retirement till 2026. How much is she getting? Are we going to know how much she's getting? It's got to be a million a year, something like that. Oh, yeah. Got to be. It, it I, sounds, want, I want that figure. You know, it sounded as if, as if there wasn't a very, very clear plan. 
Nobody trusted Hancock. And I don't even think Hancock trusted Hancock. I could... Well, he's doing very well on the TV now, isn't he? Making his money doing that. I, I find that sick, to be quite honest with you. Well, his having... wife didn't trust him, that's for sure. Oh, yes. <laughs> having launched, launched this country into a complete and utter mess with no accountability on many things, and now he's on the television making money. I, I find the whole thing sickening, to be quite honest. Well, I agree. Well, okay, we can actually we can actually move on from that uh, with a final say from Mark. Go ahead, Mark. Well, I've got plenty to say on this still. By well, the way. go on then. Go <laughs> well, on. I'll try and make it quick. Um, I don't really care who was called what, because by the sounds of it, to me, it was all justified by the utter incompetence we w- we witnessed. And it's actually a distraction from the real point. Like you said, it looked like Boris at first wasn't going to panic. He was going to do the Swedish model. But sadly, it was the likes of Cummings and that who got him to flip-flop constantly. Um, he should have just put his foot down and said, no, we're not doing that for the virus with a 99.9 plus survival rate. But he should bear the, uh, the brunt of the responsibility because they told us they'd flatten the curve and prevent a second wave. Well, he failed on both of those. And these lockdowns might have been a bit of fun for some, but for others... They really suffered badly in oh, all kinds of ways. Oh, it was life and death. Life and, and death. And recovered, yeah. So I think the public should be in, in control of this because we need proper accountability for the mistakes, not use it as this political stick to beat your opponents with. Yeah. It actually should be used to prevent further infringements on our rights, any further destruction to the economy, small businesses, and to actually ensure next time if they pull this stunt that the vulnerable are protected while the fit and healthy can go about their normal life. They didn't seem and, to care no. about them. No. And finally, no. to compensate, uh, compensate sorry, those affected by these ludicrous, insane decisions. And maybe put people behind bars who wanted to force medical procedures on people and make them second-class citizens. Yep. And, right. and, 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 right. and we need to do something about the ones who, who tried to promote this. How do you deal with the ones who don't follow the narrative? It's disgusting. Yeah. But it won't, will we? But, but then this is why, ultimately, we need to rid ourselves of this current political class of It truth. will end with a report entitled, mm. Lessons Have Been Learned. Yep, and that's it. But it will, and it... Do you know what? Whitewash. It, it, it is. But the, the, on one last point, and it's clear to me that they messed up big time on this by the fact that they actually shunned and disrespected medical professionals whose opinions, actually, they once respected, but because he didn't agree with the narrative on this occasion, they were pushed to one side. They were just the it's wrong just, people nah. uh, for, with the wrong crisis. They shouldn't have been in there. I, I don't Simple think as that. any of them were in that position. They would, they would have all done the same, maybe harder and longer. Inept. I mean, harder and longer is nice in some situations. <laughs> not, not, not this one. <laughs> Stats, man. Honestly. I'm just trying to make a bit of fun, but... Oh, yes. No, yep. it's serious. It's a yep. whitewash. It's, it was a whitewash. Uh, no two ways about it. Sorry, anyway. You can okay, well, let's move on. This is a local, and it is with... Look at him. He looks like that guy of Star Trek. Look at the way he's got that band over his eyes. Which one, Spock? That's No, not him. The Klingons. No, he is a Klingon, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, well, Steve. He beat Klingon last week, did he? <laughs> ah, yes. yes. He now, Klingon. I've written that down in my diary, what happened last week. And I'm telling you now, I will not forget uh, it. And the listeners will not forget it either. Do you hear now. this? Revenge. This is a hate crime against us. Oh, it is. You, I'm going to report you to. So- who can we report him to? Offcom. Cheshire Offcom, police. that's they it. Won't do- it's Cheshire a hate police. crime. They won't we're, do anything. We're going to get our uh, very good friend, Michael Grade, to take a look at you. And see if we can actually get you banned off air, off everything. No, I don't think so. Do remember, I'm also the official, official Cheshire Matters pin-up, so uh, a lot of people will be complaining. <laughs> oh, we, we forgot to tell you, Steve, that last uh, on the last podcast we've had a vote about that. <laughs> oh, yeah? We've actually had a vote, yeah, and we've got the, uh, you know that sheep that's been missing for two years? Well, that's the new pin-up. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Fiona. Fiona. <laughs> what was her name? Well, uh... Barbara. <laughs> Barbara. <laughs> Barbara. All right, okay. Correspondent. All right, Steve, this is one. I know you love Cheshire West and Chester. You love oh, it. Oh, yes. All right, Cheshire West, wow. new CCTV and ANPR system and CWAC media messaging. Hypocrisy. What's that all about, Steve? Come on. Well, first of all, I'll just go through a couple of little points that um, uh, I've been noticing things um, on the Cheshire West and Chester Council to give them their proper formal title, not the one I'd like to give them. Um, Various articles, which I find um, 
some of them bewildering and some of them just rank hypocrisy, to be quite honest with you. So I'll just run through a few things and we'll come to the other one, which I think is a little bit more important, uh, which is this ANPR sort of um, uh, traffic monitoring system uh, being planned for Cheshire, uh, Chester. Now, first of all, this is uh, what I call double standards from Cheshire West. So first of all, you see on their uh, social media page, they have a little video. There's a few of them, actually. They seem to put these up regular, uh, showing various members of staff talking about inclusion and how they uh, want to eliminate discrimination and promote equal opportunities, right? So the thing is... <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the, thing, the thing is... Go on. He's such a... Daft idiot. <laughs> so they want to talk about um, eliminating discrimination and promoting equal opportunities. Well, I've, as soon as I see a lot of these little videos and items from Cheshire West, it always reminds me of an alternative reality called reality. Because let's not forget no, we've Cheshire West commu- reality. Well, yeah. Now, Bearing in mind, they're talking about here discrim- eliminating discrimination and promoting equal opportunities. That's all about, by the way, inclusion. The whole ethos of some of these videos is about inclusion. Well, first so why off, have they included A and PR? Well, one second. First off, if they're talking about inclusion, not being discriminatory, and promoting equal opportunities. Now, equal opportunities doesn't just cover the workplace it call it, it covers everything in terms of e- equality in all areas right in treating people equal now whilst they're promoting all of this on their their social media page it's interesting and a timely reminder that the council leader does not respond to emails so how does that fit with discrimination and promoting equal opportunities. Does she inclusion. even go into work? Okay, the next one, that's the first point. The council has got another post up there, which is the relaunching a landlord's forum and tenant's charter for giving people a voice on on, on tenancies and things like that and, and uh, better housing conditions. Now, I found that rather hypocritical, to say the least, when the council itself is in a a business partnership, a public-private partnership, with a national housing provider which has hit the headlines many, many times with people up and down the country complaining with serious matters over housing. And the council is in a business partnership with such an organisation. So on the one hand, they're promoting tenants charter, we're going to make everything better for tenants, etc. But they're in a business partnership, which is highly questionable in itself due to the nature and structure of it. Well, let's make sure that we name who it is. It's Sanctuary. That's right. Sanctuary Housing. And one other thing about it, in June of this year, uh, one of the companies that Sanctuary paid up front, it was a Warrington company, collapsed. It was called Lane End. And they collapsed though in thirteen mil, and that. and sanctuary paid them up front. So what happened to the money? There's a little aside for you. Go ahead. Well, uh, that's something we perhaps need to go back and look at on another day. They're also promoting. This is one for Mark as well. Uh, he's onto this. Uh, we've been talking about this periodically. They're promoting a heritage strategy. Now, again, I find this rather hypocritical. And they're talking about its contribution, heritage, that is, to the local economy. Um, it's it's sort of like 1.3 billion or something like that annually now to the area. Now, I find this incredulous coming from a Labour-led council that wanted to hand over lock, stock and barrel everything about this country. They had an MP not too many years back who was lambasting anybody for flying the England flag and having a white van as being racist. Would you just give way momentarily to um, stats? Yes, I've got a few more points, but yes. 
Go ahead, yeah, Steph. I just want to go. I want to go back to the discrimination point you made at the start. Why does CWAC need to eliminate discrimination? Now, I've worked in all kinds of places in another country with all people of different races and yep. sexualities and all this stuff, and there's we never had any of that. There's never been a problem. Everyone has a good laugh. Why then? Have they got a problem? Or well, is this virtue? It's it's either, it is, Steve. It's either virtue signaling or they've got a problem because I don't see one in day to day life. I, I don't, and we, we no. come back to some some issues along That's those a, lines. I just wanted so, to make that point, really. Yeah, I mean, we've yeah. spoke about racism a number of times. So I, I don't hear it on a daily basis. I, I really don't. No. Um, so the other one is... The, last week's podcast, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the council are also now, this is interesting, seeking views from the public on their budget. Uh, proposals and how they should prioritize things. Uh, that's given, so that they can blame the public for anything that well, goes you're wrong. You're coming to my main points. Given the fact that they are indicating a £47 million shortfall in, in funding... Only which, if they make the savings that they intend to make over the next four years. Otherwise, right. it's, it's, it's over a hundred mil, the deficit. So, in my view, there's funding accountability to be had there, but also uh, the spending of the council's money or the public's money, because they're responsible for the position the council's in. And secondly, to remedy it and to be able to point the finger if it doesn't work out, well, we asked you, the public, this is what you wanted. So they want to take all the credit when it's going well and point the blame somewhere else when it isn't. Due to their incompetences, that's a typical conservative thing where they, where they well, they're actually, all running with it now. They privatise the profits and socialise the debts. Just another sort that of uh, wait a minute, so, wait a minute. What's this got to do with? I mentioned ANPR. Yes, well, we're coming to two. Wait, wait a minute. How this many hours before in? you come to it? Wait, because I'm interested in that. It's IT. It's tech. I like that. In fact, uh, this could actually run longer than a COVID inquiry. The way we go in, <laughs> like Brexit and a COVID inquiry. Does anybody want to see my WhatsApp messages? <laughs> it's going to go on longer than the Hundred Years' War. <laughs> I'm making up last, last week. <laughs> oh, nine quack, years. <laughs> the Quack Cabinet is applying for part of the River D to be uh, designated as suitable for bathing. Now this yeah. means that this means it's it's got to be cleaned up in certain areas oh, and stuff like that. Good but luck with that. <laughs> the same one second, the same Labour Council will not call for water companies to be prosecuted, to my knowledge, and the same Labour Council, equally, and its councillors, Labour councillors, and its Labour MP in Chester, will not call for water companies to be privatised because the Labour Party has been called out on it and they will not do it. When do we plan to start? Wind your neck in. I think we could start any moment, Chairman. (laughs) Shut up. Now, and another point, and this one really got me. Another one. (laughs) Is the council recently lit up the Eastgate clock or the town or whichever one it was, I can't remember now. Mm. And they, they've got this thing where they light up a building or a local bridge or something in, in a particular colour to indicate support for something. And they were lighting up a local landmark recently to shine a light on poverty. This is from, excuse me, this is the same people who two weeks after an election voted to give themselves the second allowance <laughs> rise in less than six months and they're shining a light on poverty. Steve, the same people joke. the same people who were going to turn off half the street lights to save electricity because of the climate. Oh yeah, yeah, but we can light I forgot we about can... that for a day. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Let's light bridges and stuff. Okay. Do you know do you know what? Uh, you you're saying you you're sounding to me like and what have the Romans ever done for us? <laughs> who? <laughs> you <laughs> They haven't done anything for us. Now, what about... I mentioned this at the beginning about ANPR. He's getting there, aren't you? Yes, well, we're talking about two sets of things. We're well, talking about the double standards of us. quack. I think the gazelle wants to chip in. Go on, gazelle. Yeah, it's all the guys. Going back to the beginning, the ANPR that Jonathan just mentioned, it's all the guys. Can't you all see that it's the beginning of the ULES? 
throughout the whole country. Yep. All right. smart motorway motorways are fitted with cameras on all second gantries. Well, you notice what they said. A new CCTV and ANPR system will help to inform a new green strategy for Westchester Commercial Business Improvement District. B-I-D. Rubbish. Again, I'll say it's all the guys. John. All these motorways are all being prepared for the paper mile motoring. They're going to screw you, whatever of the gruesome twosome get in. Labour all the cons. Doesn't matter. All this is being prepared. All these cameras, all the NPRs, you're going to get you less throughout this country, whether you like it or not. We desperately need to change our archaic voting system. We've got to stop these two people, these two... Uh, well, the two parties, but we'll call the them the parties. uni party. The uni traitors. Yeah. They're Can I just say... They're screwing us to the floor, and this is all the guys. Yeah. Go ahead. Steve, go on. Yeah, it says here, uh, comprising 54 CCTV cameras and three specialist ANPR cameras. What the hell do we need those for? Well, just, I'm coming to some important points following on from what Trevor's been talking about. Here. This, is, this is very interesting. <laughs> the infrastructure has been installed at 14 different locations and officially went live earlier this year. West Cheshire Commercial Bid Business Investment District say the system will enhance safety and security and help tackle climate change. AI technology has been utilised throughout with all cameras featuring improved searching and monitoring capabilities, as well as audio and AI analytics. Now, this involves private companies involved in the use of surveillance, ANPR, under the banner of tackling climate change and managing environments. The only thing that applies in relation to systems like this, which is where they will be heading, in my very strong view, and they need to come clean on this, is that this will be a mechanism to apply charges to people using certain types of vehicles going through the city. Yeah, it's yeah. a disgrace. This is a smokescreen ULES system, and I'm, I'm fully on board with Trevor because that's the point I'm making, and Cheshire West and Chester Council and Samantha Dixon, the Labour MP, and so, so, uh, Louise Gittins, who should answer her emails on yeah. matters like this because she's going to get one, it's a disgrace. You could have thousands and thousands and thousands. <laughs> Sorry, What's thousands and thousands of people in Chester and Cheshire West. You could end up having bills dropping through the letterbox for driving your car, going to work, and going about your business. It's a disgrace. This <clears throat> they need to specify exactly the reasons behind this. I'm angry as hell because I can well, see. Well, they what's need going. to. They need to say that it will never be used for those purposes. Go ahead, Mark. No, look, they're saying enhance safety and security and tackling climate, tackling climate change. So That's just a ruse. How exactly does it enhance security and safety? Because crime continues to rise, as does the number of cameras. It literally doesn't prevent crime. It might help, you know, catch some people afterwards if someone's caught, but it's still not preventing crime. And there's some studies have showed that it's reduced vehicle and drug crime in places with the CCTVs. But in my opinion, I think they're just... The criminals have wised up, and they're not doing it on camera, so the crimes are happening somewhere else and not being reported. So um, you look at the London, Manchester, Birmingham, Liverpool, and Newcastle, are the five highest crime cities. Four of them are in the top seven of the highest crime rates. Sorry, they're the ones with the most CCTV cameras, mm-hmm. and they're, four of them are in the top seven ONS crime statistics. So it's not preventing crime, is it? Really? Yeah. So I, I'm not having that one. Well, they've now, got the to get environment. Mo- uh, I can't. You like I tacky stuff. It. You how? like tacky stuff. The environment, how? Because video surveillance energy consumption is largely attributed to the electrical power required to operate the servers and the cameras yeah. and store vast amounts of video data. Yeah. So you know. Yeah, I can't. I, is I can't it really? It. Is it really? What's well, it going to do? Would, monitor pollution. I it's would agree all with the that. Guys, it's guff. It is. It is. And I would agree with that. Just finish with this because it says here West Cheshire West Chester bid says that it has been reviewing plans relating to net zero and emissions for some time, and the new data provided by the cameras will help create a roadmap to a greener and cleaner bid area for members and employees. <laughs> Since when, as a business investment 
district, an organization for developing business, been responsible for implementing local policy and implementing camera systems and yeah. things like this. Yeah, fair point. Fair point. Go ahead, Stats. What's not been mentioned? The price. Well, How much is this costing? That's it. I mean, uh, and also, once once the grants, because it's obviously being funded by a grant, a government grant. Once those grants run out, how are they going to fund it? John, they've been fobbed off here. They've been told, well, oh, this will help the climate. £100 million pound gap. Yeah. Haven't they? They've been told, this will help the climate. And they are climate obsessed. They've gone, we'll have it. Yep. Don't care what it costs or what, what it needs, but just give us it now. Maybe we should ask some of these questions, but then again, <laughs> we won't be getting an answer, will we, from no, the no. council? I'd say, play your part. Okay, quick comments on that, and then we're finishing it. Come on, Steve, quick. Well, this right, is... You're quick ir- enough. Just one second. <laughs> this is a massive irony. <laughs> calm down, calm down. This is a massive irony that Quack are constantly talking about green policies that Mark emphasises frequently, right? And yes, <clears throat> and yes, on the uh, retail park on Sealand Road, another, right, building is going up for, I believe, another drive through They give out licences for drive through facilities which have dozens and dozens of cars sitting there with their engines idling for God knows how long, and they keep giving these licenses out for these kinds of facilities. So it's a bit of a joke when they're stacking up traffic, queuing up for for overweight people just to get a burger or coffee or God knows what. what overweight people? You discriminatory <laughs> person, you. Go I on, I'm stats. sorry, but people need to get on the bike, don't they, and get, a, get on the salad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you as well. Well, there's loads going to be going on sale soon when yeah. the migrants get the bus. You know, yeah. One last thing, where have you put these cameras? Because in my opinion, they should be outside schools. Yeah. It wasn't long ago that Cheshire police were undercover outside schools to prevent children from being groomed. I think we should be sticking them outside the schools. Yeah, I would go with that. Hotels. I would go with that. Yeah, common sense, that. Mm. Okay, Steve, you're back. We emptied your wallet last week. Did you put anything in it? Go uh, get the drinks. No. Not, not the much. <laughs> I've got plenty of drinks in the fridge, but at the moment, due to various reasons, I'm not going to discuss it. I've not had a drink now for about five weeks, actually. You liar. I haven't. You lie. I haven't. Wait a minute. What was I witnessing last Friday night? I was on the tonic water. I've been on the honest juice. I've been on plenty of water. Herbal drinks are making me own healthy smoothies. Oh, by the way, I've got to tell you this. I made me and Elaine um, a healthy smoothie last week, and she said I'm not dis. Drinking that disgusting mess again. I made it with about loads of beetroots, apple juice, oh. pepper, turmeric, a few other things in it. And I followed this recipe and had a few other things in myself. I'm not joking. It was like bilge water. I couldn't do it again. Honestly, God, it was terrible. <laughs> God. So, so uh, no not all healthy stuff is good to taste. But I haven't had a drink for ages and I'm not getting them in tonight. So that's it. All right. Okay. Stats man, have you got any shout outs, shout downs? Oh, yes, I have. Now, normally I try to get off the, the shout downs and go for a happy tone, but I'm really going to enjoy this one. It's in two parts. So, the first one is obviously to the Met and to Steve Khan for allowing this level of due hatred and possibly allowing these protests on Saturday. And I've heard what people are saying in these protests when they go there filming undercover. It's disgusting. I mean, next shout out, yeah. uh, shout down, when I emphasize, I'm going to really enjoy. And it's the fake anti-racists. You know, the one who screamed about punching Nazis for years. Yeah. Well, now it's your time to shine. Where are you? Stand up to racism. Hope not hate. Resisting hate. The lefty do-gooders who bang on about racism non-stop. Oh, that's right. The racists are among you lot. Where's Wayman Bennett? And his fake anti-racist unite against fascism. Ah, he's outside the home office blabbing on about immigrants. But ignoring all the Jew haters behind him. Yeah. You just can't make this up. And all the politicians who label concerned citizens as far-right racist thugs. Where are you, Lammy, Diane, Jezbala? Where are you all? I thought you all hated there. Yeah, I thought you were all, yeah, Jezbala, Jeremy Corbyn. I thought you all thought hate and bigotry. Uh, Not when it's aimed at Jews, I see. Bunch of racists. And I'll finish with, there's no more moral high ground for you lot. That's ours now. And you Jew haters ain't going to move us. You've been exposed for all to see. Enjoy the jihadi moral low ground, you racist cowards. 
There you go. I enjoyed that one. Yeah, very hey, that good. Was said with passion, that. Yeah. I, I've got a bit of a problem tonight because we have a massive thing coming up this weekend. Mm. Um, I've got uh, an update on Modern Nation Street, which I'll leave till next week. Yeah. And we've got to mention this tonight, which is uh, Richie Sunak, as far as I'm concerned, because his, his future will be decided in the next, I'd say, five days. Oh, yeah. Yep. I would agree oh, yeah. with that. If he chooses to not cancel his pro Palestinian march yeah. on Saturday, he better call the election the next day. He's finished for good. He's finished. Now, I'm, I'm sick of, of hearing about this because... Now, I keep saying he should... Where's Starmer? Where's Richie now? We've heard nothing yet. Nothing. And You've and had Suella Braverman coming out, you know, well, and saying, saying well, certain things, you know, talking the talk, but... Nobody's walking the walk. No, they're not mentioning this march no. government-wise. Now, they're just back in it. The government says it's up to the police. I was watching this this, this over the weekend. The government no, say not. the government say it's up to the police to cancel the march. Then today, no. which I've seen, uh, the police need permission from the Home Secretary to cancel the march. WTF. No. Yeah, can I, I, can I jump in there quick? It's the Public Order Act yes. 19, 1986, Section 13. The Chief of the Commissioner of the Police can do it, Sadiq Khan can do it, and Braverman can do it. And none go. of them are willing to. Right, so you've got three of them there. Yeah. But I'm still putting Richie right at the top of the pole here. No, so is he your shout down? Seat. Yeah, he can do it. Is he your shout down, down, Trevor? Is he my shout down? Yes, yeah, certainly. That's shout dead down. easy, Sunak. Okay. All right. And my shout out completely is to all our fallen heroes. Yeah. For the eleventh of the eleventh, and God bless them, all of them, yeah, right, right from right, all right from the first world Stop war. This match, yeah, we don't need it. We don't need it. Yeah. It's like you know, uh, when I've been on Twitter. I mean, I'll I'll shout it shout it out as well. I think everybody is fed up of pandering to minorities. Yeah, yes. they they've had enough of Defo, it. John, and it, wouldn't it be nice? I mean, if they could actually protest for something. That is relevant to this country. For example, the cost of living crisis, the homeless, especially our veterans. We should be reminded of that. You know, whilst exactly. these migrants are being put up in five star hotels and getting three meals a day. You the know, thing is, John, is they, they don't shout about things that they can help to fix. They shout about stuff that's out of their control and isn't going to change a damn thing. Yeah, it's They're just not pointless do people. Anything. You know, James. it's as simple as that. And, you know, what I'm saying is it, if I see any more of those those people doing calls to prayer, you know, I'm just going to get so annoyed about that stuff because, you know, I, I'm just going to tell them, I'm just going to say, off you pop, go to, you know, this yeah. is Great Britain, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. This is not the Middle East. No, there's going to be hell to pay that, that cemetery. But basically, if you don't say, dear... Disappear. Disappear. Go on, yeah. you know, pop off. You know, go somewhere else. You're not needed. Off you go. Off you go. Go ahead, Steve. Your final shout down. You've got five seconds. Four. Go. Three. Two, one. Two, one. <laughs> Away from himself is humorous. A uh, little bit of fun to himself. Um, first of all, I want to echo uh, everybody's sentiments on here in relation to uh, the 11th coming up. And... Uh, give acknowledgement for the price paid for our freedom, which many of us can see under threat and many of us like to try and defend. They paid a very high price for what we are able to enjoy in terms of freedom today, and it should be defended at all costs politically. Yeah. So I'm also with Trevor in relation to um, protecting the dignity of Armistice Day. I really am. Uh, but my shout down and so, Remembrance uh, Sunday, yeah. yeah, absolutely Remembrance Sunday. So that's that's my shout out, and it's a very passionate one um, from all of us. I I don't doubt. My shout down is to the BBC for listing their program that they've made about Jimmy Savile and calling it the Reckoning. Jimmy Savile was never tackled when he was alive. He was allowed to run amok. He got away with it. And everything was uncovered when he was no longer here. Jimmy Savile faced no reckoning at all. No. His suspicions and his crimes 
and his reportings went and fell on deaf ears. So to me, the BBC calling that programme that they've made about Jimmy Savile, The Reckoning, is nothing but an insult to every single one of his victims. He never faced any reckoning. He never faced any reckoning whatsoever. And don't tell me or the British public that nobody in the BBC or anywhere else didn't know anything about what was going on, because I don't believe it. Is everybody everybody not noticing that... There is some major problems now, and they don't know how to deal with it because the people are turning. Oh, yes. You know, the the mood is palpable. They've had enough. Go ahead, Mark. Just back to the the, the fallen on the 11th, I think. Now it's up to us to to defend their memory. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure going on Saturday is a good idea. I'm still weighing that one up. But if not, I'll definitely be... And it probably won't happen around here, but I'll definitely be at the Cenotaphs, both of them around here, just to make sure because... I'm not having any funny business. No, no, it's I'm not, not right. sure about this on Saturday. I think it's going to be chaos, and it could—I don't know—it could end up in our January six, couldn't it? Yeah, but we don't how, it right, but, you know, well, but, I think it will be banned. I do. If they don't, it should be. They're asking for trouble because people yeah. have had enough. They don't want it, and there's nobody racist. There's nobody against Islam, but Islam leads to extreme Islam. And people tried to warn us about it in the past. And John, when- well, are these on this, these demonstrations? They're, they're, they're English, Irish. They're, I know. I just don't understand from this it. Line, I, don't. I mm. have no idea. You know, and when they're screaming, you know, from the river to the sea and all the rest of that stuff, mm. they're ignorant. They do not know their history, I know, and they don't really realize that the rest of the Middle East don't want the Palestinians. They don't want them. It's as simple as that. And now they're talking in the government about bringing them over as, you know, as asylum seekers or refugees or, you know, what have you, bringing them over. You know, no, it isn't going to work. Multiculturalism does not work, especially with Islam, because there is no arguing with extreme Islam. None whatsoever. They just want to eradicate all other belief systems. And all right, you may have, you know, moderate Muslims in this country. But the fact is, how many times do they actually really integrate? You know, they, yeah. I, I haven't seen it. I'm sorry. Why, why are they not speaking out? Yeah. Why well, are they? People, if it was people among my community, I'd, oh, I'd I mean, be we would be saying, to them. We wouldn't allow mm. anyone to target a minority. No. We wouldn't allow it. It wouldn't happen. But we're too tolerant in this country now. They've been invited in. They've been, they've taken advantage. And what we have here is a minority with a big mouth. And they really need to now wind their necks in. Because well, can I also just add to what you're saying there, Jonathan? Um, we, we said this a few weeks back, and I, I particularly mentioned this. I'm not really hearing the politicians in this country um, condemn uh, the rise in anti-Semitism in this country. No, they're at not. All. They're no, not. Braverman has, but she's just ignored, isn't she, by the police? No, by she's the after an exposition, Mark, yeah, isn't yeah. she? Well, she'd do a better job than that other useless idiot, to be fair. Well, yeah. I agree, but yeah. sl- slightly better, not perfect. But Well, I don't want to be getting back into the conversation again. Right, let's come on. Let's I'm sure we'll be going back to it next oh, week. Oh, yeah, without a shadow mm. of a doubt, especially mm. reporting I mean, on what's going on. I about things changing, what you said earlier on, Jonathan, things are changing. They're definitely changing. Oh, they're, they're definitely changing. I've got, I've, got, I've got a friend of mine um, He's struggling with his sexuality at the moment, uh, and he, he's looking to change. Steve? I mean... Yeah, I'm sorry, Steve, I didn't mean to mention it tonight, but (laughs) the thing is that he's brought up the point. Um, And I back you, Steve, don't worry about it. That's the main thing. Yeah, we're on your side, Steve, don't worry. Miss Budweiser, like 1922. For the listeners' sake, (laughs) I have no desires to be anyone other than who I currently am. I'm quite happy. Take no notice. We'll, we'll feel, by your side, but not in front of you, just in case. I feel rather <laughs> drained by these people on occasions. <laughs> Don't mess with the best. <laughs> the English lions are here. That's right. Okay. Okay. Stevie, we believe you. Go ahead, Steve. Say goodnight. Say goodbye. Now, goodbye. I'm, I'm not- I'm going to say goodbye. I don't do this goodnight business, as I've explained before. Goodbye.
Goodbye, everybody. Have a great week. Remember our, our fallen. Take some pride in your country and everything that they did for us. And have a great week. Thank you. Okay, Gazelle, say goodbye, good night, whatever you want. Goodbye, lovelies. See you next week. All right. Uh, Statsman, it could hey. It could be Wednesday, lovelies. it could be Thursday, it could be Friday, it could be Saturday. We're not telling you that. Excuse me. Goodbye, lovelies. What's this? <laughs> Bye, lovelies, all my lovely friends. Can Goodbye, you let Stats... Our lovely listeners. Hey. Can you let Stats speak? Go ahead, Statsman. I was going to say goodbye to our lovely listeners too. Indeed. And of course, you fine people. Yes, you Patriots. fine figure of a yes. map. What? Well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you noticed I'm getting a bit more in shape, to say the least? I know. You, you look like a very fit woman, I'm telling you. What shape? A circle. <laughs> <laughs> pear. It's not a temple. What a lovely pear. Hey, well, he's looking nice. Like December on uh, our Christmas catalog, uh, isn't it? I've got to yeah. tell you. I gotta tell you, I got I got into trouble. I was in Asda down the bakery aisle. You ready for this? It's unlike like you. <laughs> Get in trouble in the shop. Oh, I was going for the dough, baby. I'm going for the dough. And there were three ladies there. Okay. And I did my usual. I said, Good morning, good looking. And all three of them looked up. <laughs> I said, I was only talking to one of you, fighting out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there were some choice words that came out of those lovely, lovely words. I just want to say also, you know, this is, uh, I, I should have shouted out, but um, Our Lady at Mowgli on that night. Oh, yes, yes. She looked after us very, very nicely, didn't she? Oh, Emma. Did she know? Emma, yes. Oh. She was very, very nice. And it was it was a particularly it was a it was a good night. So we're just going to say, say uh, Mowgli, Cheshire Oaks did a great job. Have to take their word for it, won't we, Trev? <laughs> James, that word on it, Mike. Mm. <laughs> yeah, actually, it wasn't <laughs> Emma. It was Charlie. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, it's got a name wrong. No, Ouch. I didn't. Shut up, shut up. <laughs> Emma and Charlie.